subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Matt and Garrett back with you again. And today we've got a fun topic that Matt brought to the table, which I'm so excited because I love talking about the 80-20 rule, which we're going to jump into in just a second. Before we get started with that, do you all want to learn more about where we come from, what this is all about, the foundation of what makes us have this podcast? Go check out Ninja Selling. Dot com. If you want to go check out the coaching program there, which is where Matt and I spend most of our time and what I've built and grown over the years, you can go to Ninja Coaching or you can go to the coaching tab under Ninja Selling. Amazing coaches in there that'll help you add and build this into your own business, help you get to the goals that you want to achieve. And then if you want to be a, around a group of like-minded individuals that listen to the podcast also, please go check out the Facebook page, uh, Ninja Selling Podcast Community huge group in there, amazing people, amazing activity. And, uh, and I'm always in, in blown away when you see somebody put a post or a question and there's 60 comments that hit on it by the end of the day, sharing their thoughts, their feedback, their energy around what you initially had some questions or maybe some uh, uh, needing some clarity on. So with that being said, Matt, eighty twenty rule. I You brought an element to this before we were getting started that I that really got me excited because in Ninja, we talk about the 80-20 rule. We talk about 80%, you know, the things we do produce 20% of the results and vice versa. 20% of the things we do bring 80% of the results in our business. And, you know, it's been taught in the installations and you can break this down to all kinds of things. Like you walk on 20% of your carpet in your house 80% of the time. You wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. 20% of the beer drinkers drink 80% of the beer. Like you can use this all over in all types of areas, Prado's law. But Matt, you brought a really awesome element into it when we talk about consistency and we talk about people that are showing up and doing the systems and how they're approaching this. So Matt, good morning, sir. I'm excited about this one. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, man. Yeah, I'm pumped up too, man, about this. And I think what's what's interesting about this is it's, this isn't necessarily going to be a discussion around like, okay, how do I figure out where do I apply my time and everything? I think that 80-20 rule has gotten into us where we we then think we're doing something at a certain level when we may not be. And I will say, I, this a topic was inspired by Instagram. A gentleman that I follow there talks about fitness was asking people the question like, people who say they're 80% on their fitness journey, on their nutrition and all that stuff. They're they're 80% consistent. He's like, do you know what that really equates to? That means in any given month, you are perfect for 24 days on your program, right? And it was like, yeah, that's how the math works out. And we haven't necessarily explored on the podcast yet. And I was thinking, and the first thing went to my head is like Ninja 9. I'm like, how many people how many clients do we have are like, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm pretty consistent. I'm probably about 75, 80% on the mark. And I'm like, okay, that means 24 out of 30 days of the month, you are doing your Ninja 9 hundred percent. That means you have at least eight notes going out every single week. That means it's at least 44 conversations every single week. If you're working a five day work week, that means being 100% on the ball, showing up, staying on your agenda, four out of five days of the week. And most people are like, well, I work six days a week. Okay, great. Now we're up to five and a half days. Perfect. <laughs> On point. You know, 100% along the way. And I was like, gosh, you know, we tell ourselves these stories about our consistency. And then we go, why are the results not there? And I'm not saying that you have to hit 80%. There's a lot that goes underneath this too, Garrett, I think, with what's your program? What are your goals? How are you looking to grow? And you can then massage the percentages. But that 80% is a common mark. But let, so let's go back to this for a second, because again, it, one of the things when we we were discussing this, and I think it's really important to understand, we talk about it in the installation, which is the net forward energy ratio, which is that, you know, if you've got an airplane that wants to take off, you need to overcome the resistance on that airplane to be able to forward momentum going. That means if you've got a headwind coming at you and you're trying to accelerate into it, you need to overcome that headwind just to be able to move forward. Like that, that is the basis principle right here. There's drag also on the airplane, all kinds of stuff as you start rolling down the runway. And we talk about you have to be over 50% just to make forward momentum, which if you're like running at 55%, 
you need a really long runway. It's going to take you forever to get to where you want to go yeah. and get the speed that you want to be picking up here. And then you start to look at that and say, okay, well, what if I'm at a 60-40? You know, well, we now shorten the distance on that runway. Well, 70-30, got 70% forward energy and we got 30% pushing back on this thing right now. Like we've shortened the distance. You get to like 90-10. And then we talk about it also when you get to a 100% full on, this is where miracles happen. This is where, you know, the, the results can be infinite. This is where I watch people that we coach and they have results in their business that they can't explain. They don't understand how they created what they created, why they got the results in on this crazy, crazy, crazy level. And then to bring this back into our day-to-day -day stuff, Matt, when we're coaching people, we have a weekly agenda that we have them do. And on there, there's a, a piece of it on a scale of one to 10. And you could change these to like, 10% to 100% if you wanted to, from a one to 10. And we watch people that check the eights and the sevens all the time. They, they'll mark that. And I'd be really curious if we stopped and we said, out of the last 30 days, 24 of those, were you on 100%? Because that's what would say on the scale of one to 10 and of how well did I do my ninja systems this last week? That has to be the answer. Like, that's the only way to answer it. Yeah, it, it is. I mean, and what's crazy about that when you think about this is a lot of times it's not that we, we want to lie to ourselves no. or not be honest. It's that we, we just assume we're doing something. And so we don't actually necessarily know our own consistency. So as an example, like I'm in the middle of another round of 75 hard, just wrapped up phase two, which was awesome, but continuing on. So you're in phase three now? Well, no, phase three doesn't start until 30 days prior to the end of the full year of the program. So they had the rules. Yeah, there's rules. rules. So this, like, is just, this is just for me. I am so happy you're a rule follower. I would, I would just be off in the weeds. Keep going. Well, here's the, here's the thing, right? You know, have to hit the tasks 100% or you go back to day one, right? So in between when I do these things, there are certain things that I still kind of pay attention to, like my weight and all these things. And it's amazing the drastic change of what happens when I am 100% full on on a program or I'm kind of like, yeah, floating out there on my own, you know, have a little bit of this, drink a little bit of that. And all of a sudden you see the directional change on the scale or the performance change in the workouts. And when I'm not on the program, I'm just using myself as an example here. If I'm not tracking, I don't even actually really notice what's happening in the opposite direction. Because I think for the most part, Garrett, like we pretty much live our lives probably like around the 50-50. Like we're comfortable. Oh, there. Yeah. Like we can figure that out. We know where that is. I mean, if in real estate, that's like, hey, you know what? A few days of the week, I'm able to do all my stuff. I'm able to do my flow and everything. The rest of the week, I'm caught up. I'm doing the work. I'm in the business. It's it stressed me out, right? Then we come back and we kind of reset. So we don't notice the the decline as much sometimes until all of a sudden it's like, wow, I gained 10 pounds over the past 60 days or 70 days or whatever days. Yep. And it's like, oh, but when I'm on, I'm aware, 100, fully aware. And it doesn't mean that you have to be 100%. It just means, Garrett, we need to get some insight. We need to look at, our numbers. We need to diligently track where we're going so we can really understand how consistent am I in applying this business plan that I just wrote? Well, and, and, right? and this, I was thinking as you were kind of mentioning this and your stuff that you track, and I think they should call it the 365 day hard or something like that. When you start getting up into level three <laughs> or stage three or whatever, like it's not 75 anymore. Like we're, we're, we're okay. <laughs> but it's interesting when you look at the average person out there who's not really growing, but they're not really also going backwards. Like they're doing just enough to maintain. Yeah. They're not adding on a whole bunch of weight. They're not losing a whole bunch of weight. They're not growing their business tremendously, but their business also isn't falling in the weeds. They're running at about this 50%. And that's, that's kind of that area. And like, I ask people all the time, like, you know, how good do you need to be to be the person you want to be? And a lot of us are very kind of comfortable being us, even though we have these as, you know, these goals and aspirations of being something bigger. When it really comes down to it, their subconscious brain goes, I just like being me too. Like I just, it's comfortable being me and showing up and being me every day. And it's interesting when you are really paying attention. And this brings me back 
Matt, too. I've been doing a lot of readings lately on the Stoics. And I've, I've done a lot of uh, Marcus Aurelius and Seneca. And uh, I always screw this name up. Somebody can help me out there. You're going to say it, but Epictetus, I think is how you say his name. I could totally butcher that. Epic. To Epictetus, I think is okay. I'm gonna. I'm coming off my memory. Epictetus. I butcher it every time. I say it different every single time I read it. So, what's really interesting as they talk about how we predict the future and we we set our goals and, and our growth around this idea of who we want to be, what we want to do, where we want to go, and we put what we talk about, Matt, the voice of reality of what we think we can accomplish by getting there, and then they go back into the Stoics mention a, a handful of times that we're horrible at actually tracking what we do <laughs> and what gets us to where we're at and what caused the results to the person that we're at right now. We think we know, we kind of generalize of like, oh, this is what got us here. But we never, very few people, I shouldn't say never, very few people sit down and really analyze, why do I feel the way that I feel today? What have I been putting into my body for fuel? What has my sleep schedule been? What are activities that I've been indulging in that maybe I didn't indulge in before, but I've been, you know, and it's easy when things are outside the box, but there are daily habits that we have. There's daily things that we do, annual things that we do that we don't pay close enough attention to. And I think part of this, like having to step back and say, are you truly running your business in, if you look at this 80, 20, or you're saying like, I run at 80% or I run at 90% or I'm doing about 70% of the systems that I want to do to get there. You got to take the inventory and go back and look and say, let's really look at this last month. Because like, I know for me in my journey with alcohol right now, I can easily go back and be like last hand, like, well, up until my anniversary, <laughs> Got calls me out on, you know, really from May 5th to right now, like 100% alcohol free. I can, well, let's say like doing drinking in the way that you were, right? I mean, you're shot on your anniversary. But I can gauge it really quick on one drink of how I feel, how it, how it, but when you're in a pattern of drinking every night, having a drink every night, you can't tell the difference of that one drink to no drink. Like there's no like way to measure that. And I think this is where having a really good baseline for yourself and really understanding what it is that your baseline is on so that you can see the growth. This is what 75 hard does for you is it brings you back to a baseline and then you can quickly see how am I when I read every single day compared to when I read once a week? How am I when I drink a gallon of water every single day compared to when that's not part of my program? How is it when I work out twice a day for two 45 minute workouts compared to when I'm like kind of fitting in a workout every once in a while? Like you get a baseline that now you can build and understand and grow off of. And yeah, this is what we, when we do with coaching, we try to get people to this, but I am going to be asking well, some very yeah. different questions to people going forward. I was going to say, coaching clients, get ready for some extremely diligent tracking. And and Garrett, I think you know you, you talk about baseline and when we're performing at this level. And I think what's interesting about this is we can easily notice the extremes. Like we know what we're doing when we're a hundred percent. That's the seventy-five hard. Like, oh my goodness, look, I'm like a hundred percent. I'm reading every day. I'm doing all these things. And then there's like, and I know when I'm not doing anything because I can see the results there. It's that I would say that 60 to 90%, right? That range, like where we're not really sure where we fall because the results- 90 might be on the high side. 90 might be on the high side. Let's say let's say 65 to 85, right? Yeah, I'll go, go, go with that. You know, and, and when you get to the 80, 85, you're like, ooh, things are happening. Like I'm having a better year than I did last year. Okay, cool, Right. And really, even at 60, you might, and let's say you did 20 deals last year. I did 21 this year. Oh, cool. We're like maybe a, a 60% kind of net forward energy ratio or, or mm -hmm. effort or whatever we want to call it. But we, it's hard to understand. Was that 60 or was that 70? And what are the things that are contributing to that too? Because now when we bring in the Ninja 9 and all the elements, it's what's the plan and the program? Because everybody has a different plan and program. Everybody has a different business plan. But if we don't actually go and look at the numbers, and I think this is the interesting thing because um, the Hawthorne effect, which is the uh, study that was done on 
factory workers about the lights going up and going down and found out that no matter which direction the lights were going, people improved because they felt like they were being watched. When you start tracking, I forgot about that. <laughs> when you start tracking, the Hawthorne effect kicks in and you actually just start doing better because you're like, oh, I only did seven notes last week. Let me get three more in so I can hit 100%. Right. And uh, so if we are just aware, we are naturally just going to perform better in the same amount of time that we have. It's when we then decide, oh, I don't have time to track my performance when we all of a sudden go the other way. I, I mean, at least that's my observation of it in my own life and in the, you know, working with clients here. I just had this conversation here with a client. I said, listen, we need to track your stuff because every time we're coming in here, you're saying, oh yeah, things are going great and everything. I was like, but we don't really know. All we know is that you have this many deals under contract. All we know is that this is what the income is going to be. That's all we know. We have no idea how you're actually performing because we can look at those numbers like, are they good or are they bad? Like, are you happy with them? No, I want them to be better. Okay, well, we have no idea what the effort really is going in until we track that. So it's interesting. So when you look at like the 75 hard, the interesting thing about 75 hard is that it is a it's zero sum game. It's a weird one because if you mess up, you're out. Yeah. I mean, if you miss one thing, you go back to day one, right? You miss one thing. If you're not hundred yeah, percent, I mean, literally zero percent, there's no gray area. There's no like, Oh, I, I didn't do this. So it's like, we'll just continue on. We'll do better tomorrow. It's one of those, like, I'm not willing to start over from zero. So I got to figure this out. Like right now, like it's 10 o'clock at night and I got a half gallon of water that I need to drink. And I'm probably going to be peeing all night long but I got to get that water in because I am not starting at zero. It, it almost happened to me at day 29 on phase two. I was like getting ready to go to bed. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to take my picture. And like, I had the routine of doing it every morning, but the, I had a problem with my phone or something in the morning. And I'm like, oh, like I can't fail like one day before <laughs> phase two and go back. But anyway, continue. But it's like when you came out to visit me, like there was that element of like, you're like, I'm getting off the plane at this time. I have one 45 minute workout. I still need to get in and we're going for a walk. And I, we arranged a time to go for a hike. Yeah. Beautiful hike, but we got to do that more often. We got to figure that one out. That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. And so it's like, you, you start looking at like, again, that, that place of not willing to fail, not willing to not run at that level. And this is an interesting mindset when it comes around our business and our systems and a lot of times our, our personal health just day to day to day. One is, is do you have a plan to follow? And the other part is, what is your commitment to that plan? And is it a like, I hope to be that good, I'm going to strive to be that good, or am I choosing to be that good? And I think that when you look at like the Ninja 9 specifically, a lot of times when people see it, they go, this is really exciting. They leave an installation. I'm all in. I'm going. And you have that one or two days, you kind of hit, miss some of them. And then all of a sudden it starts to slide. I'm experiencing it right now. I started journaling a couple of weeks ago. And yesterday I missed journaling. I didn't, I kept talking about it. I had some things come up. Then all of a sudden another thing came up. And all of a sudden here I am starting this morning. And my goal was to come in here and sit down before I started podcasting with you, Matt, and read the and get my journal going. And I had all the reasons that I sat in the kitchen and I was like, why is the water taking so long to boil? And, you know, maybe I'll feed the cat while I'm here. And like, <laughs> and all of a sudden I haven't journaled this morning. I'm going to right after we're done with this. Now I'm talking about it. Yeah. But this is one of the- It's like, wait, we got to wrap up this podcast. I got a journal. <laughs> See you later. But I think like you, you got to look at whatever your commitment is to this. And I've- been experimenting with journaling, but I haven't made a commitment to this is who I am moving forward. I can already tell by how I'm showing up for it. I love it. I talk great about it. I've told, shared with a lot of people the the power that it's had for me, but I haven't made a commitment to it. I think this is where a lot of people are with, again, their systems. Oh, yeah. And so when you sit back and say, you know, how well are you doing your systems? And somebody gives you like, well, I'm running at about a B. That's an 80% average. We, we can work this out. That's an 85. B minus is 80, right? So we got, we got like, <laughs> we're running about, and I think this is a great way for all of you listening is to like, if you're giving yourself a B, if you're giving yourself a C, really look back and ask yourself, what really truly is my commitment been to these systems? And if you have a baseline of systems that, are, that you're grading yourself off of, that is necessary to be able to look back to say, did I do them yesterday? Did them all? Give yourself 100% for the day. If you did half of them, give yourself a 50% for the day. 
And I know because it helped a lot of people over a lot of years implement all this stuff. There are way too many 50% days or an average of that. Yeah, which is an F. Well, you know, uh, as you were talking through that and bringing in the letter grade too, I think there there's the... Well, the awareness of what is the system that you want to commit to, that's something that we, we have to make a choice on. Yep. I think you, once we make that decision, like I want to commit to being healthy or whatnot, I think we lose sight of the tracking because we feel bad, right? And I've known this too, because like when I have days where I'm not on the program, but I'm still tracking my nutrition and there's going to be like a cake day or something like that, I don't track because- A cake day? And it's and it was- and I realize, or like, I'm going out, like if it's like a birthday party or something. Yeah. I'm cake. just going to eat cake. You can eat cake, Matt. <laughs> Sorry, you're too young for that one. Although like after reading Jocko's book, like I, he has a really thing about donuts and I love donuts. And I'm like, gosh, like donuts, like the devil. Can I never have a donut ever again now? And maybe because here's the point. I don't track those days non-consciously because I don't want to see what those days turn into. I don't want to see that that's a 4,000 calorie day. I don't want to see that maybe I missed my protein target that day. And I need to accept that. I need to see that. I need to be okay if I want to do that, know that that's what's happening. And I think we don't want to beat ourselves up. We don't want to feel bad. So we don't track it so that we don't have to deal with the fact that we were off track, right? And as we're going, like we know we're going off track, like, yep, here I go, off track, and it feels really bad, and I really wanted to enjoy this cake and beer or whatever it is. And when you brought up letter grades, I'm like, maybe that's why people who were like B and C students in school do really well in the real world because they're comfortable. Like a B student is an 85% net forward energy ratio, right? That's pretty damn good. You just keep on that track and you're comfortable with that, like you're going to do well. And now I'm not saying you should never strive to do 100% full on and all that stuff, but it's just interesting. I was just thinking about, Garrett, the mindset behind this. And, you know, is there an element where we don't want to beat ourselves up so we protect ourselves with these lies? I just want to acknowledge that my 2.9 GPA has come back to serve me quite well. See, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Barely made it through high school. <laughs> But see, I hey, I'm I'm on board with that, man. Yeah, Gary V talks about being a, a C and D student all the time, you know, and I, he's doing all right. <laughs> I, got, I got asked to leave more classes than I actually was able to participate in. <laughs> but again, going along this line, I think what's really interesting, Matt, is that when you have a cheat day, when you have a day that you go off the rails, and th this, I think. I'm gaining a lot from the Stoics and I haven't read them for a long time. I got really into them and I'm now back into them again. Is that when you have those days, as you said, it's kind of one of those like, put the blinders on, put your head down. I'm going off the rails. Like we're going, we're going to go into the mud here for a little bit. But there's also so much to learn about yourself if you choose to analyze it, if you choose to accept that oh, I'm going to go man. and and go a little bit into the weeds here for a second, but let's document it. Let's talk about it. Let's look at how my body responds to a 4,000 calorie day. Let's look at how I respond to getting two hours of sleep because we decided to go all in and, and hang out with our friends that we haven't seen since high school and hit Vegas for a night. Let's look at all these elements and how it affects us because then you get to really learn about the importance of when you are on track you are taking care of yourself and you can also see it's like, yeah, it was good and we can have these things and they don't hurt us long term. We can recover from them. And now you can consciously, not as a like, I'm breaking from the trail because I'm like, I need a little day off. You can constantly be in this growth mode while going out and having some fun and goofing around a little bit. Yeah, I um, otherwise we revolt. Just this conversation is giving me a different perspective on how I want to monitor myself from a fitness and nutrition perspective off live hard program you know when it comes to business too just better monitoring that being fully aware of okay how am i performing in these things and if it's not like let's let's figure out how we can get to the self awareness point of it's objective yep that was the day that i had what's the day that i want to have today right as wallace d waddle says in um the science of getting rich. Yesterday's done. Tomorrow hasn't come. Do today's work today. Yep. Right. Just 
do today's work today. Tomorrow's work can wait till tomorrow. And yesterday's work, done or not, is yesterday. Do today's work. I, that's It might take some work to get to that point for a lot of people, particularly in real estate, because it's all this stuff that flies around us of like, oh, do this, do that, do this, track this, track that, track this, track this. But if you're a ninja, this is my recommendation. This is what I want to see people do is diligently track your ninja nine. Let's just start there. Like if you're doing that with your nutrition and fitness stuff, I would love for you to do that because I think the healthier we are, the better your business is going to run. There's so much, as you all know, there's so much discipline that carries over. But let's track the ninja nine. Let's be fully honest, right? Let's be fully honest with all of those activities. Are we doing them and at what level? And you can even have a little percentage score for each of them. And let's see where we're at in 30 days, in 60 days. See where your business is at. Because if you think about it, I mean, even if you, and I hear the whole Ninja 9, but there's also some people out there that are like, I have been striving for the Ninja 9 for a long time. And you might want to sit back and say, what are four systems out of the Ninja 9 that I want to start tracking at this kind of level? Like what what are... A handful that would well, just if you're not doing me. the other ones, just track it at zero for now. Like, that's fine. Like, just be comfortable with that's the way it is right now. It's just, I just bring the awareness into your world. That's a good point, Matt. Be comfortable with zero. Be comfortable with just acknowledging that I'm not doing that. Like, I think that sometimes we try to protect ourselves from understanding, like, from knowing that we're not doing something. And there's a lot of things in life right now that you're not doing that will make you better people. There are a lot of you right now that aren't reading every day. There's a lot of you that aren't exercising every day. There's a lot of you that are choosing to eat certain types of food. There's a lot of you that are choosing to go to bed at two in the morning because I just love binge watching shows. There's a lot of activities that we do out here that if the goal was to go to bed every night at 10 o'clock and we know it's good for us and we know we sleep better and we know we do it, you would have to put a fail on that every night that you chose to stay up and watch all those shows. And I think a lot of us, choose to not acknowledge it because we don't want to acknowledge that we're not doing maybe something that's going to be good for us. Yep. But if it's a goal of yours to obtain, it's good to acknowledge. It's good to say, nope, didn't do it. Nope, didn't hit it again. And at some point your brain goes, you know what? I'm tired of writing zeros on this thing. And am I willing to go to bed a little bit earlier tonight? Am I willing to push myself to wake up early to make myself feel really tired? By the way, that's a trick. If you want to go to bed earlier, force yourself to wake, wake up earlier because you will be tired. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing, too. Like, well, I need to get the extra sleep. No, 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 no. Be tired today. Yes. So that you go to sleep. <laughs> it's amazing how it's like when you travel and you're exhausted, and you're like, I'm going to bed at nine o'clock because I'm so tired because I had to get up so early amazing look at look at how early you want to go to bed right now i love using travel as a reset yeah but i think tracking the zeros <laughs> is really good and again get kind of an understanding of how you're showing up and and think of that net forward energy ratio that you know if we're running at 50 percent of these things we're probably not really in a growth mode if we're running at 60 percent of doing this stuff you are in growth mode but you're, you're barely just pushing this thing forward and ask yourself what kind of results do I want to create? Because the, the ability of creating miracles and results that are hard to explain to people is at your fingertips with anything that you choose to do. It is there for every single one of you, but you need to choose to run at that level. And anytime we ever watch somebody that breaks records, that sets a new standard, you does something that's outside the box that nobody can understand, when you learn what they did to get themselves there, everybody goes, oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> like, I mean, of course they did that. If they were training that way, of course they got those results. None of this stuff is like some magical, mythical thing. It all makes sense. It's all math. It's just how things work. So, yeah. Matt, I love this topic. I so much appreciate it. As I said, when we first started, I got excited about the 80-20 rule because I have applied it in so many areas of my life and gone like, yep that makes sense. And, uh, or watching groups of people and results that happen. Yep. I totally see how it works. So, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir, for going down this path. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you as well for going down it. I clearly got really excited about this topic. And so Both did. I appreciate diving into it. Everyone. So appreciate y'all listening, you know, do the math on your consistency. Let's just see where it is. Be objective. Uh, don't compare yourself to somebody else. You're comparing yourself to yourself, but just do the math and uh, let's see where we're at. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us. If this was your first podcast with us, 
Welcome. This is a good one to dive in on for sure to hear kind of what we talk about here. We are a part of Ninja Selling Ninja Coaching. So if you do want to learn about that, head over to ninjaselling.com, click the top, you can find Ninja Coaching and one-on-one personal coaching. You can go to ninjacoaching.com or redirect you to the same site. And you can learn about what um, Garrett and I spend a lot of time are and the other 30 coaches that join us in the coaching program to help individuals achieve their goals and stay consistent with things like the Ninja Nine. And if you're not a part of our community, head over to Facebook and search for the Ninja Selling Podcast and join it and share. If you want to talk about consistency there, I bet you can inspire a lot of people and find some people. There's someone looking for an accountability partner in there the other day. Great way to help you stay consistent is to have somebody who you're checking in with and working on these things with as well. So find it there. Especially somebody you don't know, somebody not right in your backyard. If you get somebody across the United States, there's something special about that because they're not going to let you off as easy and you're not going to let them off as easy. You don't know all their backstory. You don't know all their excuses. So that's a good one. If you can find someone like that, run with it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you all so much. We'll catch you on the next one and have a fantastic day. Thank you, everybody, as always. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.